Hello darlings, I am Cassandra. Welcome to the daily inspirational oracle reading provided to you by the Jungle Beauty Goddesses. I like for you to take a moment and think about anything that's troubling you, any concerns you may have, and let this energy check-in reading maybe give you a different perspective or a new insight or maybe just a sign from the universe or you may allow your mind to settle into your heart and let whatever concerns you have surface from your subconscious mind and let this reading resonate and give you new insight at, at the end of this energy check-in reading, I am going to give you a yes or no oracle reading with the Mystic Beings oracle deck that I created. They are filled with all types of oils and just all kind of magical good stuff inside of them. I like for you to think of a question that you want them to answer for you. You would have a choice of one, two, and three, and that would be at the very end of the the inspirational reading energy check-in. The first card I have for you today is from Jungle Beauty Goddess Afar. And Jungle Beauty Goddess Afar's message to you today is, get her in focus here. Her, in focus and her message to you is, no one can be a better you than you. The next card I have for you is from Jungle Beauty Goddess Katara. And Jungle Beauty Goddess Katara, who represents our root chakra, her message to you is, true wealth is an act well done. The next card, the last card I have for you for this energy check-in today is from the father of the Jungle Beauty Goddess. It's from the matter, who represents the, um, the creative force of the universe. And his message to you is, let's get it in focus here. His message is, your obsession will be your possession. So, I love this hand. The, the message to you from the universe today is, your obsession will be your possession. What this means is, Whatever you focus on, whatever you give all your attention to, that is what you're going to end up possessing. So if you like to study and you spend a lot of time studying, then of course you're going to end up with a lot of degrees. If you like to write, you're going to end up with books. If you like to paint, you're going to end up with pictures. If you like to work, sing, you know, um, write songs, you're going to end up with an album. Whatever it is that you're focused on, it's like you cannot be denied that thing. But the thing about this hand that is so amazing and so awesome is that when you are obsessed with something, and of course you're going to possess whatever that end goal is, but the most important thing is when you do that, true wealth is an act well done. So when you do something over and over again, of course you're going to get really good at it, right? And you're going to be better at it than most people because, of course, you do it all the time. If you write all the time, of course your writing is going to get better. If you make videos, your videos are going to get better. No matter what you decide to do, you're going to be better at it than, you know, than, first of all, yourself. But you're going to grow and develop your own style. And you're going to be you're going to develop some degree of success because you've given your energy to something. You've taken the, you know, intangible energy and you've made it tangible by actually applying yourself to a particular goal. Now, the thing is, once you apply yourself to a particular goal, no one can be a better you than you, darling. Right? No one can be a better you than you. So the thing is about an act well done is um, I recently received some candles from Walmart and they were packed so beautifully. I kid you not. I, I just did, I didn't want to touch them for a minute. I just wanted to look at them because I could feel the energy. I could feel the care, the love from the person who packed those candles. And even though this person, you know, was working at 
Walmart, it doesn't matter. They were giving a hundred percent. Like they were a completely present. Like I was, I couldn't believe how neat and well packed my candles were, and I could not wait to do a survey. And I literally had to write this long story, just saying how much I appreciated the heart and the energy that went into packing those candles. When I was a child, I mean, not child, child. When I was growing up, my mother was a stickler about always doing our best. Like, I, I mean, seriously, if our jeans had to be creased, our shoestrings had to be washed. Um, everything had to be shoes had to be polished we couldn't turn in our homework if if it was wrinkled if it had stains on it if it wasn't very neat that would that could get you a beat down job that could get you in so much trouble like my mother always told us that the way you present yourself is the way the world is going to treat you it's the way your teachers are going to treat you it's the way the other kids are going to treat you so the way you treat yourself is the way the world is going to treat you so that was a part of my upbringing in terms of you know, my daughter always said, Ma, you do too much, you know, with the hair and the makeup and all of that. But I was raised that whatever you do, you give it 100%, 110%. You do your best. And my mother would always tell us is that how you do one thing is how you do everything. So basically, if you want to know right now what your possession is going to be, all you have to do is look at how you spend the majority of your time what do you how what are you obsessed about are you obsessed about tv are you obsessed with cooking are you obsessed with you know your homework are you obsessed with your job are you obsessed with your kids with your relationship whatever you are obsessed with that's what you're going to possess and i know it may sound you know sound some people say obsession is a bad thing but in this reading he's saying like the energy that you give in a particular endeavor or project that is the thing that you will acquire okay and when you put your energy into something and you do a great job you know this is where you're going to create your wealth and no one can be a better you than you like when you do your best um, there is no competition you you yourself your your greatest effort is your only competition now one of the things that came to me also during this reading is that when you put I like to call it putting the booty to the mix child so we called it back in the day um, when you are doing your thingy thing when you are you know taking your earth suit like think of your earth suit like a you know if, if earth was a masquerade party right and you came in your earth suit that was your costume and you just decided okay i'm just gonna you know i'm going to be like a peacock i'm going to be proud of my earth suit darling i'm going to whatever this thing that you have you just express it to the nth degree right you're going to do what you're going to attract jealousy and you're going to attract envy you're going to attract people who are who don't wish you well people who try to copycat you um but we used to call it bun biting back in the day but basically the thing is when you do your absolute best you will attract people um people who want to be like you people who want to emulate you but the thing is no one can be a better you than you darling and when they give you their attention what they're doing is helping your star to rise so you are shining even brighter because where because you only shine because people are looking at you right so but if you are looking at other people and you're envious or jealous of what other people have their talents and their gifts then what you're doing is diminishing your own shine your own light so another aspect of this reading is that you really should be grateful for your gifts your talents whatever gifts that you have to offer this world you should be proud of yourself and you should take care of them but you should should execute those talents and gifts with care and love right so mind your business in terms of like paying attention to being the best version of you that you can be doing whatever you do extremely well and being obsessed with your dreams and your goals right and understanding that even with that level of 
dedication and commitment and consistency, you're going to attract people who are jealous of you. But just remember, that is a sign you're on track because they are giving you their energy, right? They're taking away from their own shot. And if you are looking at other people and as opposed to really focusing on your on developing and honing your craft being your absolute best then you are diminishing your ability to achieve your highest and greatest aspirations darling so now i am going to um ask you i want you to think of the question a question that you would like to ask the mystic beings darling and um We'll see what their answer is. So you're going to select either um, number one, number two, or number three, right? I'm going to first go with number one. I want you to take a moment to think of your question. What is your question for the mystic beings? And I am going to pick the card and we're going to see what their answer is to your question. Now, if you don't mind, I would love to see what your question is in the comment box below. So let's see, you have your question in mind. Here, this is the deck. I, I don't look at them. I have I have no vested interest in cheating anyone. Um, but let's see what her answer is. What is your answer, darling, to people who selected number one? What is your answer? Giving the camera a minute to clear in and okay, you know, here we go. What does this say? It says you need you need more time. So the answer to the if for people who select the number one from the mystic beings is you need more time. Whatever your question is, it says you need more time. Maybe more time to see what unfolds, um, more time to um, whatever it is. The, the answer to your question from the mystic being is you, darling, you need more time. Thank you so much for watching. If you selected number two and you have your question in mind from the mystic being, Please go ahead and formulate that question. I'm going to shuffle them around a little bit. And we are going to select a card for you. I'm going to select a card for you. So if you're taking pile number two, or I'll just say mystic being number two. We have your question in mind. We're going to see what the mystic being has to say. Okay. I'll always let this go in here and just... For some reason, get some obscure card. Okay, what is the answer that you have for the people who selected number two? What answer do you have to their question? Yes. Wow. So whatever your question is, darling, and you selected number two, the mystic beings response to you. It's yes. Thank you so much for watching. If you selected number three, darling, we're gonna go ahead and shuffle this around a little bit. I want you to think of your question that you have for the mystic beings. Kind of move this around, around, around. Kind of shuffle this a little bit. Make sure it's a question that you know that you I always I try not to ask questions that I really don't want to know the answer to. I know that sounds weird in a mug, but if I really don't want to know the answer to it, mm -mm. but it has to be something trivial and something I don't mind. But if it's something like really serious, oh no. So are you ready? Are you ready, darling? So we're gonna go ahead. You have your question in mind, and I am going to select. The mystic thing for you. And let's just go right in here and see what answer they have to your question. So whatever your question is, 
The Mystic Being's answer to your question is... Not now. So whatever it is, it's not saying not, you know, it's not going to be forever or it's not a hard no. It's just saying not right now. So that is the answer from the Mystic Things for question number three. Thank you so much for watching this video. And I look forward, I really hope this video helps someone. And I look forward to seeing you, darling, in the next video. Thank you.